Hello everyone and welcome to the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is episode 64 and this is a crafty podcast featuring crochet, knitting, sewing and other making bits and bobs. Um, you can find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk if you just click the podcast tab you'll be able to find them there or I shall pop the little link uh, down in the down bar on YouTube so you can just click that. Um, on the show notes I'll have some extra pictures about the things I talk about and any useful links, um, links to my project pages so you can look up the yarn and patterns for things I talk about but any other useful links that uh, might be helpful to you I'll pop all those in there as well. Um, you can find me elsewhere around the web as uh, oh no I'm on Instagram that's what I normally say I'm on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT and you can find me elsewhere on the web as Cherry Heart. Um, so how are you? How have you been? Um, it's nice and sunny again here today. It's really lovely. We had a sort of mini heat wave last week, which was kind of bizarre in February. It was so warm, but it was really lovely. Um, spent as much time outside as possible to drink it all in, make the most of it. Um, yeah, and then it went overcast for a bit and now it's nice and sunny again. So, not as warm, but but still nice. It's nice all the same. Um, I hope it's good with you, wherever you are. And, um, yeah, let's get into it, shall we? Um, so, first section, or oh, first thing I'm going to do is a bit of podmin. And I'm just going to quickly draw the winners for my uh, last giveaway. So it was a giveaway for, to celebrate my column. I'll try and show this to you without crinkling too much. In the Crochet Now magazine that is. Um, yes, so I've got a new column, it's just a little one near the front, but quite excited, very pleased about that. And this issue is the uh, first issue with my column in. And so they sent me an extra one so that I could give a copy away to you. So I have done a random draw on the giveaway um, thread where I just asked you to uh, pop over to the thread and just tell me what you are crocheting now. Um, so yeah, so thank you to everyone who entered that. That was a really nice little thread to look through and see what you're all making. Some really lovely things. Quite a diverse range of things as well, really pretty. But anyway, so I've entered them all, um, entries number 2 to 109, and the winning post was 79, and that was, um, the Ravelry name was Ella B202. So congratulations to you, Ella. I assume that's your name, you haven't actually got your name filled in, but... Um, yeah, Ella B, if you want to contact me on Ravelry, drop me a little line and let me know your address and I can get this magazine sent off for you to enjoy. So you're in America, so this probably, I, I would imagine this isn't that easy to get in America, if at all. I don't even know if it's available over there. So there we go, that might be something a bit different, so I hope you enjoy that. And as I say, thank you to everyone who entered as well. Um, I got a message from someone, sorry I can't remember your name, who said, well I'd be doing this for every issue. And um, I hadn't even thought of it actually. But I'm not sure because I don't know if I get a copy of each issue. Um, yeah, I know they can't, the magazine contacted me to sort of say this one was coming out and... Um, you know, they, they mentioned the idea of the giveaway. So yeah, I'm not sure if I get a copy of each one, but if I do, then maybe we'll do another one. But, uh, um, yeah, so that's the giveaway done. Um, I don't think I've got any other podmin. No, I haven't. Um, so let's get into what I've been doing, or what I'm up to, crafty-wise. So I'll start with what I've done, which is this one here. Let me pop and get it. Right, so here she is. There we are. A shawl, of course, because I'm obsessed. If you've been here before, you will know. I always forget to say this at the beginning, but if you haven't been here before, thanks ever so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you have been here before, thank you even much for putting up with it and coming back again. What a trooper you are. <laughs> So yes, here is my shawl, um, 
that I finished, I finished this the other week actually, but I think it was blocking at the time of the last podcast, so I didn't actually get to show it to you. So I'm just holding up this pretty edging to show you, because it's so pretty. Um, yeah, so this shawl is from this book here. Um, so this is my, um, one of my Instagram friends, or well, from the blogging days actually, a blogging friend. Uh, that's Micah. Uh, what's her last name again? Micah Van Court. There we go, that's her name. Um, she's on Instagram and her blog is Creation, spelt with two J's. I'll pop it down here so you can see, probably know her. She's a bit of a crochet ledge. She's got some beautiful, beautiful things uh, that she's made and I think she's done at least a couple of books now, if not three or more. And uh, yeah, I just really like her style. She's always done really lovely things. So this book is actually in Dutch. Um, so she's based in the Netherlands. This book is in Dutch, but I think you might be able to get it in English now. But um, the reason why I was getting it, other than just to support my friend, is because there are charts in here. <laughs> so you've got the written instructions but everything is charted as well. So um, I was able to manage with that. I thought, I said I'd, I'd give it a go. If it's got charts I'll probably be alright. <laughs> but yeah, it has been fine. I've even learned a bit of Dutch, a bit of Dutch crochet lingo, you know, when it explains the stitches at the front. I've, you know, you can see what the Dutch is for it, you think, oh yeah, I know that, so that's what that's called. So you can kind of make a little bit of a head and or tail of the instructions. But um, yeah, but with the charts, it's no problem. So I'm just going to find this shawl so I can show you what it actually is. Although, look at these! It's so cute. I want to make some of these little doilies. So this is what it is. It's this one here. Which I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Basically, in the English for it is summer shawl. So, Zumashal. That's probably not how you pronounce it in Dutch, but that's my best English effort for you. <laughs> yes. So I've made this before. I made a Zumashal before. Um, and I made a cotton one, but I wanted, I just really enjoyed the pattern and I wanted something that was more of a winter shawl, that would be a bit warmer. So I thought I would make it in um, this drops that I had in stash. So I've been continuing sort of using a lot of stash yarn and sort of trying to look through my stash and see you know what I can make with it, see if that, see if my stash inspires me to make anything or alternatively if I'm inspired to make something to see if I can get it out of stash. Rather than trying to buy things all the time because I have so much lovely stash that I want to use. Um, yeah, so this is Drops. This is the baby alpaca. So it's an alpaca and silk blend. Um, I'm not sure I remember the colours. This one is powder. I think this might have been wheat. Um, I think this was something like dark grey. This might have been light grey or medium grey and this was called something greyish purple or words to that effect. I'll, as I say, I'll put my um, link to my Ravelry page in show notes so you can see I have got them all written down there. Yeah, so that's five balls, so I had one of each colour. I think I'd got them with the intention of making something else. I think possibly I had a pattern idea in mind, but that was some time ago and I've no idea what it was. I think I got these from a um, Fibre East festival quite a few years ago. So yeah, but I just thought, oh, I could um, try that shawl. It's normally two colours, so normally the main body is in sort of one colour and then the edging is just different which is how I did my original. I thought it might look kind of nice striped up and I think it does. I like it. I like how it came out. So yeah, quite happy with that. Not sure there's much else to say about that. Just that it was a lovely quick make, nice easy pattern. 
and yeah I love this little edging it's been hanging up here since I blocked it um, a couple of weeks ago sort of waiting to show you but I shall wear it now it's finished so I think that's the only done thing I have to show you well I have something that's sort of done let's move on to that next So my, so my sort of done thing, I finished last night actually, so it is done but I was going to block it. So I've got it in my lovely Betsy Makes bag um, that I got as a little birthday treat to myself because I just love this colour and look at this lovely mint with the red, it's just so beautiful, love it. And I got the, there was a yarn, she did a set with, um, it's got, let me show you, the Needle Cozy. And it also, there was a yarn with it that I've got in here that I'm kind of savouring for a little bit longer. Yes, so I didn't actually need the Needle Cozy though because this is a crocheted project I'm going to talk to you about. So as I say, yes, I finished this last night. Let me show you it. It's a scarf. Let's hold it out so you can see. This is why I had to have it in this bag. Look at that for a match. Coordination. Perfect. So this is, well this is a more of a scarfy version. This is a pattern by Emma, lovely Emma of um, Lulu Loves, who also has a pod, no, a blog, yeah, and a podcast. Um, and it's called her Penelope scarf. So she had made this, um, she'd made like a cowl version and then she made a wrap and I just thought oh that's so pretty and I loved it so as soon as she had it all written up I thought I should get started so this was something else when did I get this I got this at not that long ago actually uh, the yarn I'm talking about now yarn porium which was a yarn festival in London and that was last year November maybe? So I haven't had this this long but I when she was showing the Penelope, Emma, when Emma was showing the Penelope in her podcast I thought oh I wonder if I could use these two yarns that I have. So let me tell you about the yarns. So I've got two held together here um, and they're both West Green Loft yarns so I had one that was um, a superwash merino, a fingering weight, four ply yarn, um, in Briar Rose colourway, which is this lovely greeny colour. Let me just see if I can pull some apart because I didn't have quite enough mohair to do my last repeat. I should show you a bit of it separate. I don't know if this is important to show you, but I'm showing you it. <laughs> so there it is. So it's they're very similar colours. And this is the uh, other yarn, which is the mohairy bit. So there's Briar Rose, which is this lovely sort of subtle minty colour with just can you just see those little tinges of pink on it? Oh my goodness. Yeah, so it's got those little pink tinges on it. And then the mohair one is Kid Mohair and Silk. 72% mohair, 28% silk. And that's in the colourway Mr Bingley, which is basically this beautiful, soft, subtle, minty, duck eggy, gorgeous colour, which is just one of my most favourite colours ever, ever. So I love it. Um, yes. So this was one I got when I was in Yarnporium and I was speaking to Vicky of um, West Green Loft Yarns and um, I was discussing how the whole mohair trend was really lovely but not at all for me because of itchiness and oh, couldn't have it near me and just made my, made my toes curl up to even think of it. And she said, well, 
that's what I used to think, but get a load of this. So um, she gave me a shawl that she had and I put it round me and it wasn't remotely itchy, but it was gloriously warm. So she converted me to the ways of the mohair. So I've held this, those two double because the pattern is for um, an Aran weight yarn. So the two fingering held double kind of approximates to Aran quite nicely. Um, yeah, so that worked out quite well. And then I think in Emma's original pattern, she had a lot more yarn than me. So I just sort of had my two hanks of finger and weight, held them together. I thought, hold them together, that'll make Aaron. That's perfect, great. That's what I shall make in that. And then when Emma actually published the pattern, I actually looked at it in a bit more detail. She had a lot more yardage than me. So I had like 420-ish yards, and I think she used something like six maybe getting into 700 yards can't quite remember so i thought ooh, i mean hers was gorgeously long and really wide as well so i thought am i gonna have enough so I thought, i'm not sure i am so i'll make mine narrower and then hopefully i'll be able to get enough length out of it it might not be quite as long as Emma's, but I thought hopefully it'll be enough so it at least makes a scarf and it doesn't look divvy. So basically, I've just kept going until I completely run out. Like I say, last night, I just got to the last bit of mohair that I couldn't quite get a last repeat out of. So that's what I have got. So mine's quite, it looks quite a bit thinner here, but I haven't blocked this yet or anything. And it's sort of one of those ones that is going to open out quite nicely when it's blocked. So I'll get a bit of extra width. So I would say I made mine about three quarters of the width of Emma's maybe. Um, and then like I said I just kept going till I ran out but I've got, I think Emma's went, I think she put it around her neck twice, I can't get mine around twice. But it does go round once quite nicely and I've got a bit hanging. So I think just in my coat like that my coat there, it's just, oh, it's so warm, it's so soft and squishy, oh my gosh. It's the most gorgeous thing to wear. I was actually <laughs> I was actually wearing it last night as I was making it, there's a heck of a draught. And so I wrapped this bit round my neck and then I was crocheting on the end. <laughs> but yeah, I did think, as I was making it, if it's too short, I could just sort of join the ends and make it into a cowl and just sort of have it wrap around a couple of times so I could still do that but I think I think this bit will hang a bit longer if I do and I just really like having it squished up around your neck it's just the warmest thing but it's so light because it's fluffy it's like because the mohair I mean makes it so fluffy but it's so light like a cloud so the um yeah it there's no sort of weight to it, it feels like. So yeah, it just feels nice. And I could sort of cross those over and put like a little pin there, it might be quite nice. A little shawl pin or something. It'd look quite pretty. But this is how I really like it, all wrapped up and smooshy. It's like wearing a cloud. It's like wearing candy floss. Ah! But the heat thing is amazing because you sort of wrap it round you <laughs> and I don't know, it just seems to heat up really quickly, retain the warmth so quickly. It's amazing. When I wore it at the festival, I had to sort of, you know, because you're in there and there's people or bodies making it warm, it was just so boiling, I couldn't wear it. But it's so super snuggly, I think it'll be perfect because although it's nice and sunny today, it has turned cooler. And I'm still wearing my scarves when I go out. And if I go up the field as well, then the wind blows across when I walk the dog. So I think there'll be plenty of opportunities to wear this before winter is done with us properly. So yeah, very happy with that. So I might just give that a block um, before I call that finished. Although actually, you sort of wear it and it feels all smooshy and you think, does it really need blocking? What difference is it going to make? It's fine as it is really, isn't it? I might just leave it. I might just leave it. Although it might be quite nice to sort of open the pattern out a bit because you can't sort of see massive amount of the detail there but it is like a really 
really lovely open lacy pattern it's really beautiful yeah so that one was fun to do really enjoyable nice easy pattern nice um, easy little repeat and great TV crochet you know you can just mindless watch the TV and mindlessly make it I sort of think of this as my um, Les Miserables scarf because we'd recorded the series and um, we were watching it while I was making this so like the sort of up to about this last little bit it was all made by watching episodes of of that it's not a miserable scarf it's a glorious scarf um, right so anyway moving on that is what I've done so let me show you what I am doing I can't remember yes I did speak to you about these didn't I these socks these socks that I was having an argument with these socks have been no end of trouble so I think I've posted about these on the blog as well so I'm going to get a bit confused now about what I've said where and what's going on um, but basically I've had quite a bit of trouble with the old colour work let's show you so that bit's a bit manky but this is sort of attempt number I don't know 408 or something no it's sort of the third proper attempt I had a go I think last time I spoke to you I'd had a go and it came up too small and I couldn't fit it on the foot so I was going to go back and do it again so I went back did it again I was going to have this blue in these top hearts to begin with and I'd done the colour order wrong I think on the first hearts and but I carried on and it just it was just getting worse and worse as I went on it was looking more and more a wet mess I had sort of really tight bits where the stitches would go small because they were pulled too tight but I had loads and loads of horrendous baggy big long droopy ridiculous holy stitches and it was just oh it was horrible it was a mess so depressing so I'd done all three hearts and it fit on my foot but it just looked absolutely horrific and I think because after the first attempt as well, that was it, because they hadn't fit on, I'd ordered some different needles. And I'd had trouble because I was using my circulars on the first attempt. I'd had trouble with it pulling tight sort of around the corner. So I thought, oh, I'll get myself some DPNs. That'll be easier then because then I'm always knitting on two needles and I just move it round so you don't ever have that pull it round the corner bit like you do with uh, Magic Loop. So that will sort it out. Everything will be marvellous. So I had my second go and everything wasn't marvellous at all, in fact it was ten times worse. So I kind of just threw it down in a fit of peak and didn't want to deal with it anymore. And I sort of posted about it, saying, <laughs> mm, these socks. Um, anyway, so long story short, I got some great advice and I have had another go and I'm um, much happier. So I've gone back to my magic loop, but I actually knit them... I turned them inside out to do the colour work, so I'm still going round and round, but just from the outside. Um, yeah, so that helps sort of pull the um, strands round the outside, and so it helps particularly at these edges because you're having to pull it round the edge. So you're having to pull it round the outside instead of it just sort of cutting across there and being short. So that helped. But I got some other really great tips as well. So I'll probably, I'll, when I finish them, I shall um, sort of post some of the tips I got, I think, and in case they help anyone else. But yes, anyway, that was a lot of waffle about it, wasn't it? But basically, we're on the second attempt now, and it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it does fit on the foot, which is like good because that's a basic requirement for a sock isn't it and um, I've got colour work that at least I, is acceptable it's acceptable and I've still got to block it yet so that might make it look even more tidier but it, there's this bits here where it looks really quite good in the middle there it looks pretty good doesn't it show you the back so I've got a bit of a something happening there but 
overall, compared to what they were, not too bad. And I've gone with um, these colours. <laughs> you can see what I've gone with. It's here for you to see. And uh, yeah, I've gone with a contrast heel. And I thought I might put like a little stripe of these colours in. I'm going to have that colour toe to match the heel. But I thought I'd put a little stripe of these colours in here. That might be quite nice. So yeah, so they're coming on. Just got to do the other one now, which is... I'm sure it'll be, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. So this yarn, just quickly, I think I told you before, is um, Erica Knight for John Lewis, is what it appears to be called. That's all it has on the label, and it's a double knit yarn. So there's this little shadow. The wind is blowing and it's blowing something. It keeps looking like someone's approaching. Um, yeah, double knit yarn. It was 100% wool. I think it just said wool. I don't think it specified the type. I haven't got a label in here so I can't see, but I'm pretty sure. But yeah, it's quite nice looking stuff. And it's got sort of like a really loose, almost looks like a sort of hand spun because it's, you can see the two single plies that have been just wrapped around each other, a really loose sort of ply. Yeah, so it's a nice sort of effect. I'm not 100% sure I like it as much knit up, to be honest, but it's okay. So yeah, so those are those. They are coming on. Um, a little better now. And then the last thing I've got to show you, at least, because I've got some other bits on the go, I think, um, is in my lovely West Green Lofts again. West Green Lofts bag. This is a woven bag that I got when I went to Unravel, maybe? Not this year, last year. Didn't go this year. But that's good because it meant I didn't spend any money. <laughs> so yeah, so in here I have got my little cream squares. So I showed these on Instagram the other day. Just lots of these all piled up. So what I'm going to do, the plan is a bag. So I'm going to sew them together or crochet them together more likely actually. And I'm thinking, well I was thinking three by three on either side of the bag. So I just want, you know those kind of bags that, um, like a handbag, quite small, on a long shoulder strap and I want sort of like fringing off the bottom. So yeah, sort of like a boho sort of style bag they normally refer to them as, don't they? Sort of a bit of a... So yes, yeah, so I'm thinking these all sewn together, panel on the front, panel on the back, possibly some kind of flap to go over the top, and then little strap, fringe, fringe, fringe underneath. That's my plan. So yeah, so this again, being so very good with my stash, is another one. Um, I've had this in stash for ages. I got it in John Lewis in a sale. Um, I think I had four. Uh, yeah, I think I had four of them. I don't know if this is discontinued yarn or it was just a discontinued colour. Um, but yeah, so it's this Rowan Pure Life cotton. 100% organic cotton. There's a They make a big fuss about the fact that it's organic cotton. I've got it from sustainable sources. I mean, that's good, don't get me wrong, it's a good thing. But considering that cotton isn't really... I have recently learned, anyway, that cotton is one of the thirstiest crops on the planet, so it isn't actually that fabulous. I guess that's why they've sort of promoted, oh, look, it's it's sustainable source and it's recyclable and it's really good and it's 100% organic and it's lovely in every way. We just won't mention the fact that... You know, the whole cotton growing thing. Isn't that great anyway? Uh, yeah, but I thought it was interesting. It's an interesting way of marketing it. It's all pure and perfect. And then there's always a catch, isn't there, with everything. There's always a trade-off. So reasonably ethical, apart from the fact it's cotton yarn. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, like I say, I've had it in stash for years. And I got it in the sale. And... Uh, 
I wanted to use it. So I am. So yes, yeah, so um, I've got quite a few of these now. I've nearly got enough if I go for the 3x3. Three three. I'm not sure that would be big enough. But I don't want it to be huge. So I could perhaps put like another sort of row of edging round. But I might go for like 4x4 four four maybe. If it doesn't look big enough. I might have to go for 4x4 four four actually, do you think? Um, yeah, and then because this is beautifully neutral, um, I was thinking maybe, see my original idea was to have it all just cream and completely plain, but then I was thinking would it might be quite nice if I just put like a really bright fabric behind it so you get these sort of pops of colour through the hole. Well that might be quite nice as well. So I might try that, I might try lining it with a pretty bright fabric. Who knows. Um, and this square design is just, I just played until I came up with something I liked. Um, so yeah, there's no pattern for that. But I shall have to... I've got a few people on Instagram asking me for it, so if there's interest, perhaps i get that written up. At some point, I don't know when. Um, but actually, talking of writing patterns up, that moves us seamlessly into pips. Patterns in progress. So let me just clear up a bit. Um, yes, I have news on patterns in progress. Exciting, exciting news. Woo! I've actually finally, eventually, yay, released the Getting Ziggy Squared Blanket pattern. Yay! I should pop a picture of it in here because I don't have the uh, blanket anymore because it was a gift for my lovely niece who wanted a blanket for her bedroom so it went off to her um, at Christmas so um, yeah I posted about it on the blog so I'll put the link in there if you want to read a little bit more about the backstory of the blanket but yes in essence um, it's out and so uh, talking of in essence it was the essence of unicorn blanket that's what I called it because she wanted a unicorn bedroom with all unicorn things in and I made her a little unicorn toy this is the backstory actually and um, yeah she wanted a unicorn blanket I was a bit like hmm what's a unicorn blanket but I remembered I had these lovely bright colours and so I was like it's not actually a unicorn on a blanket but it's like it's channeling unicorn with all these gorgeous happy colours and I had a, um, the border, I had sparkles in that yarn. So it's like it's essence of unicorn. And um, she went along with that because she very kindly went along with that for me and, and uh, yeah, so I made that blanket. So that is out, so my essence of unicorn blanket as I called it, but the official pattern name is the Getting Ziggy Squared blanket because uh, the original idea came from my getting ziggy shawl which was like a triangle so it's zigzag well you've seen a picture I don't need to explain that it's zigzags on zigzags on the diagonal but it's all in the nice neat it's all squared off so it makes a lovely blanket shape so yeah I know some of you have been waiting for that so thank you thank you ever so much for being so patient and waiting for me and um, showing interest but I shall pop the links in the show notes and you can pop over and get that if that was uh, something you were waiting for. And then the other one that I keep talking about, again, that's progressing. That's with my lovely testers. So some um, people that are lovely, um, kindly volunteered to test for me. I can't talk anymore. Um, yes, yeah, so that's ongoing. It seems to be going OK. So, yeah, hopefully that will be not too much longer. And I'll get that one out as well. And then I can start thinking about what I'll do next. I kind of had those two on my mind. I kind of feel like I need to get those out and then I'll regroup and see where I am. I know people have been asking about my um, the jumper I made, crochet jumper I made, um, just in sort of granny pattern. So that might be the next project. Um, yeah, I don't know. One thing at a time, I'll get those two out and then I'll see where I'm at with it. So that's uh, all the making I have. That's my patterns in progress. Um, so I've got two sections left. So I've got incoming goodies, which I haven't got much of, but I have got one thing. And that's these. Minis. 
lovely, lovely minis. So these are by the Fibre Fox, and it's a lovely um. Uh, what do you call it? It's a, it's a lovely set because you get six. Normally you'd get five, wouldn't you? So that would be a hundred grams. So it'd be the actually if I got seven here, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, seven. There's seven. So normally you would get five, which would equate to sort of a hundred grams of fingering weight yarn. They're twenty grams each. But this is a lovely set of seven, so I thought that was quite good. And they were just really in pretty pastel colours. So I haven't got them with anything in mind particularly. I have got a few ideas for mini projects I want to make, but yeah, I haven't really settled precisely on what it will be yet. So they might become part of that, or I might just keep them for a while, or I don't know. But they were just gorgeous, subtle, lovely shades, and I just couldn't pass them up. So yeah, so that's my only incoming goodie because I'm maintaining my, not not really by enhancing my stash any more than, you know, it's already fairly substantial. So um, that is just all I have for income and goodies. And then Podmail is my last. That's my new section is Podmail. So that's where if you have a question that you'd like to ask me on the podcast, um, just leave a comment and I will answer it. So I've got a few lovely questions coming now. So thank you ever so much for all of you that um, asked me questions. So I'm going to just sort of try and work my way through them um, and see how we go. So the first question I got, well, I'm not actually sure I'll be able to preserve the order of them because I've got some questions that have come through on YouTube and some that have come through on... Um, Ravelry. I've opened a thread, a Podmail thread in the um, Cherry Hearts Cozy Corner, the Ravelry group. So if you think of one and you want to pop it there, that's fine. But if you want to just sling, sling it in the comments, that was nice, wasn't it? Just sling it in the comments. If you want to do that, you can. Um, so this is from Cathy. This was on YouTube. So uh, thank you, Cathy, for your question. So she says... Um, so it's not a technical question, but uh, she just wondered where the name Cherry Heart came from. That's a good question, because I always struggle with names. So <laughs> I always think it's interesting to hear how people think of them. So way back when, a million years ago, um, I started my blog. Um, and the blog was called Cherry Heart. So I needed a name for my blog. And I'd remembered, I'd read somewhere that it's quite a good idea to not have a name that's too um, descriptive of the blog in terms of like boxing it into a certain section. So it's good in the blog to have a niche and stick to it, well, if you want to, you know, search engines and all that garb. So I'd read that it was good to sort of have a real niche because you find your audience there. But it's also good not to sort of call yourself something like Sandra's crochet because then if you ever don't do crochet it's like well why are you on the crochet blog then so you don't want a name that kind of boxes you in you want to allow yourself a bit of wiggle room and I thought that would be good for me because I'm I'm not very good at sticking in a little niche I kind of do a bit of this and a bit of that and I'm a bit of a dabbler and a bit of a magpie and get distracted by things so I thought oh, yeah I can see that that would be a good idea so I didn't want to put crochet in and to be fair I started out as a knitter albeit only very briefly before crochet came in um so yeah but anyway I didn't want to put those in the title because I knew I, it was quite likely that would veer off on tangents sometimes so, but I wanted a name that kind of summed up what all of that meant to me. So all the sort of making stuff. So I always used to be very creative. Well, I was always sort of doing stuff like that as a child. We'd always be making things or drawing or painting or whatever. And also sort of on holidays at Nan's, they would always be... The, 
you know, it's just, just to keep us amused. You know, this is the day before iPads. You didn't just go around and sit on your iPad. You were like, oh, I'm bad. What am I going to do? So adults will come up with things and say, go and do this and get out my hair for a while. And those things would be cross stitch. Like I say, the painting, the drawing, the sticking, the making, the cutting out. But, you know, we learned cross stitch. We did knitting. My One of my nans used to knit all the time. And so she, you know, we would knit with the, like the little French dollies where you make the kind of knitting worm or she would get us actually knitting, you know, she'd cast on for us and then we'd knit for a bit and and we did um, English paper piecing, you know, like the sort of quilting with hexagons, she taught us how to do that and, and things of that sort. So there was always sort of something like that going on that they would pass on and like I say, it was just a way to sort of go and do that for an hour and be quiet, I'm sure, to keep us amused. But when I came back to sort of doing that kind of thing later as an adult, after I'd had my sort of little girl and things, it just rekindled all of those feelings of, oh yeah, I love all this stuff, don't I? We always used to spend doing times like this and it kind of really made me reconnect with that and just... I know, it's just a really nice feeling, just felt like, ah, oh, yeah, this is, I really love this, this is what I enjoy, how come I haven't been doing this, you know? So, yeah, I always say it felt like coming home, sort of doing that sort of thing, felt like, oh yeah, why have I been away from this? This is, it was like coming back to something I love. So I kind of initially wanted the, like, the home aspect of it in, because it felt like coming home, but also, um, the fact that it was sort of, it's not necessary, is it? You don't need to do any of these things in your life. You know, you need to go and earn money and you need to pay the bills and you need to cook and you need to clean and there's so many things you need to do and this isn't about that at all. I mean, I guess it used to be at one time you would need to make things but that's not what it's about now. We do it just for hobby and leisure time we don't you know we could buy a jumper we don't need to make a jumper in fact it probably cost us more money to make it now because that's just the way of the world now but anyway so I'd like the idea of it just being purely pleasure purely for the joy of it not being sort of a, a necessity but like a sort of like an extra so I was thinking it was like an like the icing on top of the cake or the cherry on top of the cake you know the cake is nice to eat but this stuff life is nice to live but this stuff is just like it's like the icing it makes it even more fun and even more enjoyable the little it's the little cherry on the top of life I was thinking so there's the cherry part for you that's where that came from so yeah so I concentrated around the home part for a long time and sort of um like what it felt to me so the home and the heart and then the cherry thing and basically it just came from mushing those two ideas together the home idea and the cherry on top I think I was originally it was good it was going to be called cherry on top or the little cherry on top but I think I wanted something a bit more concise a bit shorter so I thought oh I'll just take the the cherry pit and I'll take the the this my heart belongs at home bit and I'll just mush them together <laughs> And it kind of incorporated two sort of big parts of what it means to me. The fact that it's it's like coming home and it just makes me feel happy and warm inside. And home is where I'm happiest. And it being just a little cherry on top of life. A little bit of delicious and exciting garnish to enjoy. So there you go. So that's where it came from. That was, took longer to say than I thought it was going to. But yeah. Um... And then my little sort of logo has sort of morphed over the years as well. I think when I first started my, I'm sure the very first podcast, the blog I posted was called with a cherry on top or something. And then I just sort of changed it quite quickly to the sort of cherry heart thing after only like two or three posts. So, yeah. And there it has been ever since. So there you go, I hope that was of some vague interest to you. <laughs> I always feel like I don't know quite how to end this section, like, oh, well, there you go. It's not necessarily helpful, is it? It's just, it's just a story. It's just something I've said. Um, but anyway, I think that's it. I did 
get a tiny bit of vlog footage the other day. I'm not really sure there is enough not really sure there's enough to show. If there is, I'll stick it on the end here. And if it isn't, we'll pretend I never said this and carry on with our lives as if it never happened. But yes, that's it from me. Anyway, I hope you are having a uh, lovely time wherever you are. And um, enjoy the next couple of weeks until we see speak again. And fit some lovely relaxing crafty time in too. Okay, I'll see you then.